Hey everyone, today we're going to be using Epiphany to pull in data from Binance. If you don't have Epiphany installed yet, I've left a link in the description down below. So if you have it installed, go ahead and go to Extensions Epiphany and Import API. So this API URL path, this is what we need to discover what we need. So what we're going to do is we'll go to the Binance API documentation and we will have a link to this as well. And so you can see all the different endpoints over here. So what we need first to do is we'll go to general info and here is what's called the base endpoint. So this is the starting point. So let's go ahead and copy that. And we'll throw it in here. And before I move on, I just want to make a quick note that a number of these endpoints you see do require an API key, which is available if you have a Binance account. However, most of those endpoints requiring API key require the key to be encoded, which is not something that Epiphany supports just yet. But when it does, we will be sure to update you. So let's go ahead and look at market data endpoints. And we see the different final endpoints over here on the left. So first off, let's go ahead and just do symbol price ticker. All right, and so when this pulls up, we'll see our final endpoint here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and then we'll figure out the parameters we need. So paste this in there. And then what you'll see here is a weight by IP. And so you see there's one for single symbol and two when symbol parameter is omitted. So this is the parameter here. So this is if you add a symbol. Um, you see example over here, LTC, BTC. So if you don't, um, it says it's not mandatory, but if you don't do it, it has a weight of two. And with the API restrictions or limits that they have on Binance, if you do this, you're going to run out of all that they give you right away. So we're just going to stick with a single symbol. So it's this parameter called symbol. And the way you add it is at the end of this endpoint where it says price, we'll add a question mark, and that's going to begin our parameters. We'll do that symbol and we'll just pick let's do BTC and then we'll do the Binance um, USD tether coin so that's BUSD and we'll just run with that one so we'll hit run and run we can leave the rest of these the way they are and there we go so there's our symbol BTC BUSD with the current price so you can adjust this um, with whatever symbol. You can look it up on the market for all the different trading pairs they have. So let's go ahead and go to our next one. So this one's very similar. We have best price per quantity on the order book for a symbol or symbols. So we're just going to modify. We'll take this book ticker. And we can actually reuse this and symbol. So all I have to do here is replace this part and let's go ahead and run it so again we'll keep these all the same as the defaults and there we see bid price bid quantity ask price ask quantity and so that's the best prices for the book ticker next let's look at 24 hour ticker price change stats so again, this one tells you careful accessing with no symbol. Um, they probably should have that on all these, um, just as far as hitting the limits. So let's go ahead and grab this one. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this out, and we'll just add it again, just so it's not confusing. So after this main part right here, api.binance.com forward slash, and then we'll add that. We're going to go add that question mark again. We'll grab symbol again and BTC BUSD. So this one again is 24 hour ticket price, rolling window price change. So we'll go ahead and run this again, overwrite. And now we can see our 24 hour stats right there. All right, let's grab a couple more here. Let's do current average price. So again, we see our different endpoint here. 
we'll go back in here, starting at after the dot com, we'll go up to the question mark and paste that in. And we'll go ahead and run this. And there we see our current average price. And finally, let's go ahead and pull in this Klein candlestick data and we'll show you kind of some of the more parameters we need to do here. So this one is symbol, also has interval. So you can see here mandatory, the ones that are mandatory, the ones that are not. Um, it tells you here start and end time are not sent, the most recent clients are returned. So start time, end time has to be um, what's known as epoch time. So that's a little confusing um, to figure out if you aren't used to it. Um, but uh, you can see example of it over here. So it is something you can convert online if you look up um, converting to Unix time. And um, you can take a date time and then you can be able to propagate that. So let's just go ahead and show you the symbol and the interval on this one. So we're going to go ahead and grab this Klein's or candlestick data. And we'll throw that in there. And so we have our symbol. So let's go ahead and add our interval. And I believe interv All right, so here we see those interval letter values for headers, interval num. Um, so what we have here is we have seconds, minutes, hours, and days. So if we do 5m, that'd be five minutes. Uh, if we did 15m, 15 minutes. So let's go back to our candlestick data right here. And we'll just pick, uh, let's grab this interval. And so we have our first parameter here after the question mark. So to append another parameter, all you do is an and, and you can keep doing this as much as, as much as needed. We'll do interval, let's do 15 minutes and run this. All right, so now we see our 15 minute intervals. So we see our prices here. And then there is that Unix um, time that I was talking about. And so let's just do this convert Unix timestamp right here. So you can grab it there and we can see that's February 18, 2022. And so you can do the reverse if you're trying to look up a specific date time. So um, I think that will do it for today. So thank you very much, folks, and we'll see you again soon.